So the uh, biggest thematic piece that I will lead us to in the end, in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, is um, really the invisible parts of the galaxy. Because I think, uh, you know, a lot of us uh, get, uh, get interested in astronomy, looking at the things that we can clearly see when you are um, out at night and <laughs> when the sky is clear, you are looking up at the sky, you see the stars, you see the patterns. And, um, and that clearly, immediately visible thing is what draws a lot of people to astronomy. And there, there's a great value there, you know, the things that you can see, you start by um, cl closely observing the things that you can see. And, um, and I, I think once you get into science, what I hope will become fascinating to you is um, the things that are not visible things that uh, really take a lot of uh, mental power to work out that those invisible things are there. So, so that's a big thematic piece. And um, as we get to the, the end of this discussion about Milky Way, you will see some of those invisible things or some of those things that are not immediately visible, but with some knowledge of laws of physics and uh, detective work, you can figure out that you have missing pieces, things that should be there that somehow you don't see. So so with that uh, theme in mind, I just want you to kind of um, flip through <laughs> a good chunk of the slides. So, you know, for most of them, I'll just be flipping through other than to maybe explain where this come from. This is a you know, screenshot from Stellarium. I zoomed out so that you can see uh, most of the sky in this one view. It's a fisheye view, basically. And this marker is placed at the location of what's called the Sagittarius A star. That's the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. So this is... Uh, uh, um, this is a marker that points to where the center of our galaxy is. If you look in the, so I don't think I myself can actually recognize such uh, the constellation Sagittarius without star charts anyway. But if you can somehow find the Sagittarius constellation and look in that direction, that will be uh, where center of our galaxy is. And it's uh, actually. Um, so I, on, I myself only learned this as I was putting together these slides, but it's a very interesting story of how people um, figured out what the structure of the Milky Way is. Because, um, so, you know, Milky Way has been seen for a very long time. <laughs> I uh, got this list of names from this Wikipedia page. Uh, of all these, I can only pronounce the last one, Galacticus cuculus, um, in Milky Circle in Greek. If you know how to read the Greek letters, you can kind of see Galacticos, Galaxy, um, and uh, Kukulos, or, well, it's a cognate to circle, so it kind of looks similar to circle. Or um, And there's a Korean version, but it's basically a Korean version of the Chinese version. Uh, in Korean, I think it's called the Unha, Unhasu. And it means a silver river like the Chinese one does. So I can't pronounce any of the other ones or even the Chinese one because I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> I do know enough to know that these are probably read from right to left because that's how these are written. <laughs> but it's a, Milky Way, it's a very distinct feature in the sky. Um, in the cities, you can't really see it because this is relatively dim. Um, the fo these amazing photos of Milky Way you see, they are usually taken with the telescopes and long, long exposure um, uh, photography equipment. So it's not something that you can immediately see. And if you're in the area where it's very dark and the sky is very clear, you would see Milky Way almost the way you see uh, it, they, I remember when I saw Milky Way, when I say middle school, I was at a, at a camp, it's out in the countryside, so it was very dark. And uh, in the sky, I saw something that looked like a cloud. And it took me a while to realize, oh, that's Milky Way. Um, so, so, yeah, it, it's a very visible feature in the sky once you've observed it enough and uh, 
um, notice that there's a cloud, there's a like a group of cloud in a sky that otherwise appears very clear, and then you see the same cloud over and over, night over night, and you realize, oh, they are not clouds at all. It's part of the sky, and um, and yeah, this is a simulation using Stellarium of what uh, looking, observing the Milky Way under a telescope is like, and I think way back in. Module 1, uh, we talked about some of the accomplishments of Galileo, and one of them was he was the first one to use. Galileo is credited as the first person to realize that the cloudy patch in the sky isn't cloudy patch at all, it's uh, individual stars. Um, and um, and the amazing story of uh, mapping the Milky Way is how people figured out um, what what all this was. So our view of Milky Way is quite limiting because we are in the Milky Way, you know, imagine you are um, in a really densely, imagine you are in the middle of Oakland. Um, as you walk around Oakland, uh, you, you might find some uh, larger features, geographic features of the city, like the Lake Merritt, but um, the, it's a, hard to see the overall layout of the city from your local vantage point, even though the the, the, the freeway I-880 is the big portion of Oakland, it cuts through it. <laughs> from where you are, you might not see it. And um, it's kind of the same deal with our view of Milky Way, that um, we are restricted to our local vantage point, and there are larger features of the galaxy that's uh, hard to see. So it's uh, amazing that as early as 18th century, there were people who uh, mapped the stars and realized that, um, that what the structure of the, uh, the portion of the universe that we are in looks like. And they got some of the parts right. Uh, they got the shape of Milky Way right. I guess just uh, looking at the stars in different directions, you can figure out that there are more stars in the direction um, of the plane of the galaxy than the direction perpendicular to the plane. Um, now, they uh, were wrong about the larger features because they didn't know about the um, the interstellar extinction or reddening. Um, there's a dust in the medium between the stars and that does the blocks of visible light. So the far distant stars they could see were prop, even with the telescopes, were about 6,000 light years away. So, um, so, so it, it would have looked like to them that we are at the center of this collection of stars. Um, but it's amazing to me that they got the shape right still. And um, more modern measurements that uses um, distance estimates to globular clusters. And um, he's using the, the method that, uh, that one of the Harvard astronomers figured out in 19 or something about a deck. So this is a, like a modern method that he's using. And, um, and so he mapped the, the distances to different globular clusters that's been discovered. And uh, he figured out they are distributed in a roughly spherical volume. And he made this bold assumption that, uh, that at the center of that spherical volume is the center of our galaxy. And um, so I think where's the... So this is the diagram, schematic diagram of the cent structure of our galaxy, and it takes a lot of detective work to figure this out. Uh, the globular clusters themselves are visible in the sky, but it takes the knowledge and understanding of the Cepheid variables to estimate the distance to the globular clusters. And so it takes a lot of analytical work to even figure out this um, um, distribution of the uh, clusters in the halo and things like uh, the, the disk and the bulge that uh, that takes 
more careful measurement. It's so uh, shape like this is not something that we can immediately see. I mean, you can see it in the diagram, you know, if we locate the sun here and we are more or less where the sun is, then uh, we are not out here, like, you know, uh, 100,000 uh, light years away looking at the Milky Way. We are, have, we are restricted to the view of the Milky Way. We are, we are, we are observing our own galaxy from inside. Let's see here. Let me just flip through and <laughs> pause where I see. Um, yeah, this is the interstellar reddening. Um, this is from a section of the textbook that we are technically skipping. Um, I, so if you want to track down the figure and look at it, you can. You don't have to. It's in the section that we are skipping. And um, and I guess maybe this is worth mentioning. We do this in astronomy quite a bit. The image that's here, it's not the image that you would see visually if you had a high-powered telescope and looked in that general region. This is a composite image. Um, portions of it are showing the things that are in visible light. And things that are shown in red, it, uh, it represents uh, what they measured in infrared or radio frequencies. So in visible light, this region would actually be a blank. It would be just a black, dark. Uh, in fact, in the section, they show two versions of this image. There's a version that shows what this actually looks like in visible. So, um, so when you are looking at astronomical photos, I encourage you to always look at the caption to see if it's um, the actual image in visible, which some of them are, or if it's a composite image where the colors are utilized to encode additional information that wasn't necessarily invisible. And one last category, sometimes you see um, artists concept. And um, so this is a real image produced using a radio frequency. This is not artist concept, but every now and then even NASA posts images that are artist concept and there's a value there. But um, it's, I think it's important for you to know when something is, based, uh, something is a real image or based on real data and when something is, um, has some imagination added to it. And usually NASA's very clear about uh, labeling those. Like this, this is not an artistic concept. This is um, actual measurement. They tracked these positions of stars um, uh, using the, I think, near infrared um, measurement near the, the Sagittarius A, and they were able to actually um, uh, figure out the orbit of many of these stars. And using those orbits, that's how they figure out the mass of the supermassive massive black hole at the center of our galaxy. And I think there's a, um, so there's a simulation of this that I show later in the slides. I will just play that. And uh, for that, I want to be clear that that is a simulation. <laughs> um, so yeah, spiral alarm, that's other galaxies. Oh, we'll talk about other galaxies in some module 5.2. So let me just skip through here. And this is where I want to be clear that this is an artist's concept. So if you follow the link <laughs> for work by NASA, then, um, and so, so this is, drawing image is meant to represent something. And this is where I would encourage you to read the text that follows it. And what they are showing here is that, uh, um, the new arm structure. So previously, our galaxy was thought to possess four major arms, but um, what they, um, using the infrared images, what they uh, figured out is that it's dominated by just the two arms wrapping off the ends of the central bar. So this image that's here that illustrates that, you know, central bar, and there are two major arms that come from those two, that central arm. But what you should be <laughs> clear about is that this is an artistic concept. So the difference would be if this is actually based on data, then for each of those dots, there's a measurement of a star that represents that those dots. But when it's an artist concept, you know, um, 
So the major features are based on things measured. I think this is the Orion Spur um, that's mentioned in the slides. And there's a collections of stars that make up the Orion Spur. But other than that, um, good chunks of, uh, of it are made up by the artist. So this uh, helps you visualize what the galaxy would look like. But if we are somehow able to send a spacecraft, you know, 100,000 light years um, perpendicular to the plane of galaxy and look down on galaxy, then um, we, it shouldn't surprise us if what we see looks very different from this. Because this is um, what an artist imagined our galaxy might look like, not what it actually looks like based on data. Um, so, but you know, these images are useful in talking about the things that we do know. We do know the collection of stars that make up the Orion Spur, the local region where the sun is at, the sun is here, and the nearby arms. Those are based on the stars that are actually measured. Yeah, same deal here.